welcome once again uh, friends for the NPTEL module on strategic trade and protectionism uh, theories and empirics. We are on the you know week 4 lecture number 20 on uh, clarifying further uh, to, uh, to the previous content on intra industry trade uh, and, 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 and its measures. As we know there are uh, so many uh, you know different uh, methods of measuring intra industry trade and it has huge relevance for uh, the developing countries context. So, therefore, uh, we are supposed to clarify the nitty gritties of uh, you know trade measurement. So, as a background to the understanding of uh, intra industry trade we have already discussed in the last class. Uh, so, better to recapitulate uh, the discussions further uh, and, uh, and the, the first important point for discussion here is that uh, it constitute uh, the intra industry trade component constitutes the major portion of the world trade and also specifically for the uh, you know Indian context. Now, the empirical evidence since 1970 by different articles suggests that you know the maximum world trade actually takes place. Uh, among the similar countries, especially identified by Gro Global and uh, Grubel and Lloyd in 1975, following the you know new classical approach of international trade theory, uh, or or the you know uh, the you know co consequences of the new uh, trade theory, discussed largely on intra-industry segment, then the intra-industry segment in the trade uh, patterns. Now, looking at the variety of products uh, in the basket of uh, trade, uh, majorly we are confining our analysis of uh, intra industry trade in, uh, in, in two channels. One is through horizontal approach or another is through vertical approach. Uh, so, therefore, it is called uh, horizontal uh, intra industry trade or it is called uh, you know vertical intra, intra industry trade. Horizontal where certain attributes are different. Uh, so, uh, usually the products varieties within the industry or within the farms are, are, are more whereas, in case of vertical segment we, uh, we, we can characterize those differences by quality. So, higher the quality vertically the products are actually you know differentiated. Now, uh, so therefore, uh, we, we just mentioned here that consumers actually view uh, view goods as a bundle of characteristics in case of horizontal uh, in, in intra industry trade, whereas uh, you know for vertical they uh, characterized by different quality, you know quality of the product. And uh, for one such example is uh, computer uh, personal computer industry, where we have different variety of processors enabled in a say, single you know product line called personal computers. So, uh, even in the personal computers are actually varying by quality because of their quality uh, you know processors enabled in each of the units. Now, the quality is uh, you know uh, I mean quality preference or the differences in the quality in different countries may be largely corroborated by the income disparities or uh, among, uh, among the countries or within the countries technological uh, advantages or disadvantages differences in endowments of skilled uh, labor or human capital. Now, looking at uh, the horizontal model once again we are uh, we consider this to be more relevant for understanding the occurrence of IIT uh, intra industry trade among the developed countries and the vertical models uh, for explaining IIT between unequal partners. So, usually what we have already mentioned in the previous lecture that horizontal models are more relevant among the developed countries they used to have trade uh, for horizontal different uh, products or differentiated products whereas uh, among the unequal pa pa uh, partners of the countries vertical uh, models are more relevant uh, these are the, the 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 views from different experts now discussing on uh, the differences based on quality uh, or even the characteristics countries are divided largely as I just said uh, in the previous point that countries are actually you know uh, differentiated by quality. So, and then in vertical uh, intra industry trade takes place among the unequal partners. So, therefore, there is a clear argument discussed in the trade theory called north versus south trade differences. North versus south 
uh, you know trade differences north stands for developed countries and south stands for developing countries developing countries are largely producers or export uh, exporters of poor quality products as emphasized by acharya in 2005 marjit and rajodri in 1997 we already discussed this in the previous lecture Recently, the developing countries suffer further uh, due to uh, non-tariff measures by developed countries in the latest discussions. We have also discussed part of this argument in our introductory lecture, where uh, there are various forms of uh, invisible uh, kind of restrictions raised by the developed countries for the developing country. So, therefore, developing countries products are at risk uh, for exp exporting in the international uh, you know market <coughs> houseman especially uh, in, in its in its to houseman at all in its 2007 paper mentioned that countries are actually poor because of their activities countries become what they produce so even uh, we discussed uh, before on uh, on on one of the models of trade called uh, emphasized by professor Jag jagdish bhagwati called uh, called called immerse rising growth rate so, uh, where though we discuss about uh, terms of trade, uh, the prices uh, and its attachment in the international basket and, and it, it, it defines the value of a product. So, price is one of the reflections be, uh, or one of the representations behind uh, understanding quality of the product. Since quality variation depends on technological advancement and the availability of human capital or the skilled laborer. Uh, so, the transition from, uh, from horizontal to vertical or the other way around uh, I mean uh, is actually important for policy you know implications especially for the domestic economy or especially for Indian context. Therefore, we are supposed to understand what kind of transitions are there from one variety of IIT, IIT to another variety of IIT. So, the share of uh, intermediate goods uh, actually dominate. Uh, dominates the uh, you know uh, intra industry trade globally as emphasized by by uh, you know uh, Brulhat in 2008 paper and Marini in 2017 paper. Similarly, in Indian experience uh, is, is quite interesting to note because of the fact that though India is famous for uh, high amount of unskilled labor or the laborers are quite unskilled in Indian context. But its exports are actually not uh, you know on skilled type, its export and its value are of uh, skilled variety especially in the software uh, you know segment. So, uh, uh, so it has you know larger share of high technology and skill intensive commodities as also mentioned by Acharya in 2013 paper. So, productivity of export basket at the cross country level China and India, uh, India were uh, you know pointed out to be the outliers in the set of developing countries mentioned by uh, 2006 paper of uh, Roderick. So, <coughs> so, what is important here to note that software export as I just mentioned is more important for I mean uh, more uh, more more crucial for India and India actually you know harness the uh, benefits uh, because of the software segments uh, also as mentioned uh, in Roderick 2006 paper. India's XP which is basically the productivity of export basket uh, is actually unevenly higher uh, because of the software segments. So, there is hardly any systematic approach yet uh, mentioned which decompose actually the total IIT into, uh, into, into different uh, you know categories like horizontal or vertical. Uh, so, following the papers of Bakchi 2014 and uh, which used 6 Indian industries over 1990 to 2013 papers, Sribastav and Madhuri paper 2011 during uh, 2000 to 2008 actually discuss about the decomposition of IIT intra industry trade to horizontal and uh, vertical IITs. One, one, one case study may be you know emphasize here. Uh, for 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 a, for an anecdotal uh, understanding of of uh, horizontal versus uh, vertical IIT differences, if we take the uh, you know example of passenger car industry, whereas we know that uh, you know we know that passenger car industry actually assembles variety of uh, 
you know <coughs> segments <coughs> variety of small farms are actually attached within the larger industry called passenger car. Now, one, one, uh, one, one important point to be noted here if a product requires large volumes to be produced for the product to be profitable for a firm then few firms will actually exist relative to the volume demanded. So, and these few firms actually lead to two way trade flows. Uh, since large volumes to be produced for this kind of uh, industry, few farms are achatas. So, therefore, this leads to two way trade flow of that specific product, which actually leading to lower IITs. So, lower uh, horizontal IITs, which is quite important to note. The passenger car industry is actually characterized by large minimum efficient scale and high initial cost. And these actually uh, factors lead to industry with few farms, which, uh, which I have just mentioned. Most of these farms have a differentiated you know, product portfolio that matches uh, the consumer's demand for different varieties. And so, so, so this has led to actually very few farms, and few farms is a matter of concern for the understanding of uh, lower uh, horizontal uh, intra-industry trade. If uh, even if most producers have a uh, differentiated product port portfolio, their products are often classified as belonging to a specific quality segment as you know passenger car industry. So, now concern here is when we are trying to assemble the products to have a uh, segment that will differentiate consumers uh, taste or the products for consumer taste we will actually end up with a very few you know uh, suppliers. Uh, so, there are concerns for low, lower horizontal uh, you know, IIT. We will clarify what is called horizontal IIT. Uh, so, let us discuss once again uh, that what kind of approaches are uh, yet mentioned in different uh, papers. So, Bakshi 2014 paper used uh, unit value disp uh, dispersion criteria. We discussed this slide earlier in the le previous lecture. So, I am not emphasizing here much on this. So, this is famously known as I mean uh, Bakshi, uh, Bakshi paper used the Greenway, Hein and uh, Milner paper uh, GHM approach using HA 6 digit level. Now, accordingly the uh, you know lower vertical uh, IIT or higher vertical IIT is actually classified uh, based on this approach. So, they talked about 6 Indian uh, ma six major Indian manufacturing industries over the period 1990 uh, to 2013. They found that technologically inferior quality products especially the uh, I I IV double IT uh, have been dominant in Indian uh, export basket throughout the period of the study. Whereas, horizontal IIT and export of high technology goods have gained some momentum after specially uh, in, in uh, no, to, to, uh, 2008 from the crisis period, recent crisis period. Now, looking at the latest figures of India's uh, intra-industry trade, uh, now you can easily uh, find out the, uh, no, uh, the, the percentage rise in different years, these are the data from uh, from 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 uh, world intellectual integrated trade solutions by world bank as these are as per the latest figure available in in that uh, data set and uh, there is a gap here because of unavailability of uh, the f, uh, f, you know cases related to intra industry trade so therefore uh, calculation has not yet been made now, so uh, here the, the 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 chart discusses about uh, number of industries uh, trading in uh, related to intra industry trade, which is quite important. So, let us move on. We have already discussed this earlier, so I am not uh, discussing further. Uh, the famously uh, uh, used technique for understanding intra industry trade by Glo Global and Lloyd, Global and Lloyd in 1975, as per the following formula. We have already discussed, let me quickly mention the formula here. Now, this is uh, broadly uh, country from A to B. A to B for exports of the ith ith uh, particular uh, you know unit or ith industry and the import of uh, from the you know another country to country B I mean A to B out of the total trade total trade on the uh, you know uh, denominator. <coughs> now, this uh, broadly uh, measures uh, the, the value of intra industry trade as I already said if it is the same industry like you know uh, in the same industry if it is export only not import that means we are not actually uh, receiving any import 
uh, of any content on the same industry that means import will be 0 and this will be only you know exports. So, export divided export is equal to 1. So, 1 minus 1 equal to 0. So, when it is 0 that means you know there is no question of intra industry trade it is only in inter industry trade. Uh, on the uh, other extreme case when the same industry is actually producing certain output and uh, those output are actually you know uh, made uh, possible due to 100 percent imports of the same varieties or the raw materials that means export or is equal to imports through the through the uh, you know raw materials. So, this uh, numerator segment is actually 0. So, 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. So, extreme values are 0 and 1. So, 0 stands for no intra industry trade and 1 stands for uh, full intra industry trade in the extreme I mean I mean in, in this context. So, there are intermediary values and can be emphasized. One of the but uh, I mean shortcomings of this particular method G, GL method is mentioned by, by, by other approaches is that uh, I need not emphasize I have already discussed this is that you know it did, did not talk about uh, the trade balances because it has taken the absolute value. So, uh, and, and that too it, it uh, nowhere uh, differentiated horizontal or vertical approaches of measuring intra industry trade. To overcome these limitations one such approach was adopted uh, in, in, in 1983 paper by uh, Boxtran this is in famously called BG index. BG index uh, is actually a bit different than that of the earlier one it, it, it captures the uh, captures the, the, the trade imbalances especially it is not export to import you can mark the differences. Now, it is specifically uh, differentiating the export from A to B, but here it is ex export from B to A of ith industry. Now, what is A to B? It is average measure of, of export of A import of A divided by twice of A export plus export of B export of B I mean uh, it is the total trade of country B is the total trade of country A out of the total imports in country B and uh, this side is uh, uh, the total expo uh, total trade basket out of the double of uh, total exports and its average what is the net you know flow of goods and the uh, rate at which I mean the uh, direction at which it is multiplied with that of the average of trade flows. Now, nowhere it is actually creating problems with trade imbalances. So, therefore, the approach is little advanced and uh, so the, the I mean this is the approach is clearly emphasizing uh, 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 certain direction towards under, uh, clarifying the uh, trade imbalances issues which was not uh, which was a criticism to the earlier approach. Another uh, approach mentioned by Balasas, uh, Balasas in, in 1986 uh, an index which actually take the sum of the ratios of trade balance to the total trade for each product group and then dividing by the number of product groups. Now, this is clarified through the following, uh, following approach I mean it is not exactly similar to the GL approach neither the BG approach. Now, here it is it is mentioned like this instead of uh, taking it 1 minus it has taken on the numerator itself it has taken the net imports or uh, net trade from from the 1 minus uh, uh, of the net trade. Now, what is this uh, x export a to b which is actually of uh, total uh, trade from a to b export plus imports out of the twice of exports that means you know what is the volume of trade uh, uh, by doubling the I mean out of the double, double of exports times the uh, you know the rate at which actually the trade is uh, 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 is is having certain direction towards A to B. We already discussed this uh, A to B and its direction and if you are multiplying it we will find out the you know a, x uh, uh, the x direction from A to B of ith industry. After uh, by, by following this method we can find, find out one thing for sure the total exports uh, by country A to A to you know country B and total a imports A to B is the total imports by country A from country uh, from country B. As the share of IIT uh, increases as the share of intra industry trade increases the Balasa's index as proposed by uh, by Balasa in 1986 
that B L A B declines from uh, 1 to 0. And uh, similarly, uh, we have already discussed for export direction the import content can be also follow followed from the equation here. Now, let us move on uh, to clarify uh, the sec uh, regarding the second limitations of the uh, global and Lloyd index. Global and Lloyd index which actually emphasize I mean, we did not talk about horizontal versus vertical differences is actually discussed in this uh, approach by 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 uh, A. A. B. D. Raman paper 1991. They initially categorized and uh, they, they talked about in the 1991 paper the, the difference between export and import unit value is maximum up to 15 percent. The product will be said to be horizontally differentiated when the export or the import value is differentiated by less than 15 percent and, act, and or if it is exceeding 20, 20, 25 percent I mean I mean if it is exceeding 15 percent then we will interpret as vertically differentiated or if it is less than uh, 15 percent it will it, it is as per their suggestions that it should be defined as horizontally uh, integrated uh, traits. Now, from this figure it is very clear that uh, export and imports are actually overlapping with this, this portion. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, one of the suggestions by by uh, by certain experts that uh, the minimum of export and import is, is the value uh, called intra-industry trade. Since this is the minimum one, uh, at this level, whatever the amount is there will be considered as intra-industry trade. And uh, so, therefore, this is highlighted in uh, in this particular uh, diagram. <coughs> so, IIT is nothing but uh, twice of minimum of either export or import this is uh, you know export import just make it twice that is the value of you know intra industry trade uh, as a simple pattern of calculating intra uh, you know intra industry trade uh, you know discussion. Uh, so, total trade is equal to inter industry intra plus inter where intra industry is composed of uh, horizontal as well as vertical intra industry trade. Horizontal intra industry trade is when imports are exposed within a specific industry during a sp uh, specific time generally one year time period we take are composed of products of same quality. So, time interval that is studied usually one year as I mentioned and uh, vertical IIT is, is then when the traded goods are instead of different quality where in the you know uh, horizontal one we are emphasizing on uh, different uh, you know specifications where here we are emphasizing the product quality. So, most economists assume that price reflect quality and see, so therefore, price is the unit value of measurement. When unit values are outside a specific range as we initially uh, mentioned as 15 percent, if it is within the 15 percent we define as horizontal, if it is exceeding 15 percent we define as uh, vertical. Uh, intra industry because there are higher uh, you know overlapping if the overlapping is uh, less than 15 percent it is horizontal ok. So, that was mentioned by uh, a you know a b d Raman uh, in 1991 paper famously known as uh, known as GHM approach Greenway, Hein and Mil um, you know Milner uh, uh, Milner approach they define uh, a, a, the index called uh, they define the index by modifying the GL approach or GL traditions in three digit level classifications. The equation is mentioned here they mentioned uh, with slight changes to it. Now, <coughs> the changes are you can follow it off here the j, j instead of mentioning like this uh, I mean uh, instead of uh, defining that they simply sim I mean further simplified that they have taken the all possible jth industry what do you mean by j here uh, j is a j 5 digit level in product class i. So, if the product class i is defined uh, at 3 digit product class and uh, from country a to b you know, what is the particular jth industry within the 3 digit uh, you know classification. So, uh, we can also modify to other digit classification, but once we are sticking to a classification we have to actually restrict to that while calculating with another countries and its flow of export or import. So, here uh, we actually uh, mention clearly for the jth industry 
and their connection with uh, the, the trade. So, nowhere we are actually having the problem with uh, the trade imbalances because you are only sticking to the jth uh, uh, classification, jth industry uh, or, or of the ith class. So, therefore, there is no problem at all. Now, the underlying assumption is here is that the relative prices are likely uh, likely to reflect the relative uh, qualities uh, as mentioned by Stiglitz 1987 paper. So, unit value uh, used as an indicator of the average price of the uh, particular good. So, what do you mean by H double IT? Uh, once again it is as I said uh, clarified through uh, unit value of exports, U V X stands for unit value of exports. And there are certain limits given, alpha represents certain benchmark level, uh, benchmark level uh, with the variety of uh, instrument mentioned in different papers, they found that unit value of uh, you know uh, exports is very very important for calculation. So, there is no obvious value for alpha uh, as mentioned in different paper. Uh, so, <coughs> usually the, the, the I mean in different papers the amount value I mean the alpha varies from 0.15 to uh, 0.25 and so the, therefore, this indicator is actually frequently used. Now, standard industrial uh, you know trade classification SIT, uh, SITC uh, you know classification of 5 digit level uh, used in different measures by different uh, expert uh, they they are for contained with a limit called plus minus 15 percent. So, therefore, 15 percent if it is less than 15 percent then it is actually uh, horizontal otherwise if it exceeds 15 percent it is vertical. Now, if now our concern is what do you mean by unit value is nothing but value of the exports of 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 jth industry of ith classification. Uh, so, basically the per particular value out of the total exports uh, or total exports uh, to or total units exports and here on the numerator we are mentioning the value of that exports. So, that therefore, it is called uh, you know unit value measurement, unit value dispersion method. Now, based on these indicators uh, the facts are derived. Now, we here mention that in order to define vertical intra industry trade either the limit as, as mentioned as suggested by different experts either it will be less than this limit or that means 1 minus 0.15 or it will be more than that limit. If the either of the direction is are not followed that basically in the intra industry trade uh, this is the limit if this is followed then clearly uh, we define uh, the intra industry trade to be horizontal. If it is exceeding that that means you know we, we are uh, having with uh, intra and uh, uh, you know vertical intra industry trade. Now, further if uh, that means uh, you know if the unit value dispersion is exceeding 1 plus alpha or it is this indeed, uh, <coughs> then I, IIT uh, on the aggregate is called you know vertical intra industry trade. Otherwise, if it is not then IIT is nothing but called uh, horizontal intra industry trade. So, horizontal industry trade is nothing but total, total trade minus intra industry trade minus vertical intra industry trade. Now, I think I have already explained this uh, 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 further to add to the discussion of horizontal versus intra industry trade. If the trade is classified as vertical, uh, then the GL index we discussed earlier uh, for vertical IIT is equal to the aggregate uh, IIT uh, as we already discussed. Therefore, the, uh, the, this is true since uh, at the aggregate level the IIT is either vertical or horizontal. And there are a gamut of uh, you know understanding related to the cl clarifications for HIT and VIT uh, emphasized in Stiglitz, uh, Lancaster, Krugman. I need not mention this is the one I discussed in the earlier lectures. Now, a bilateral IIT level with respect to India's high income partners, uh, while the same effect is non significant for non uh, uh, low income countries. Uh, the VA double IT especially vertical uh, you know intra industry dominance uh, is double IT for select dead countries like India in the present day's trade. 
Greenway in 1994 paper calculated HIT and uh, you know uh, specially for uh, UK context they similarly found alpha as significant at uh, 0 0.15 and this is their equation you may follow it correctly only slight change here is they uh, take the uh, change with uh, respect to 1 plus alpha in the denominator rest uh, are, are the unit value dispersion of export and import are same we have already uh, discussed. Uh, follow the PPTs and find out uh, the <coughs> differences. I will discuss uh, to point out here that if the trade value is just slightly below the cutoff that is 9 percent, even if the varieties are differentiated, such small levels of IIT will not be considered for further analysis. Basically, if it is too low, we need not consider it. Here, I mean the slide is all about emphasizing the GHM approach and FFA approach and uh, uh, there is another approach by, by Ajar and Elliot, they uh, decompose uh, further uh, IIT, I mean IIT uh, to, 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 to uh, in, I mean in this manner that 1 plus unit value of exports minus unit value of import, again they have taken the net unit value to that gross unit value and uh, they defined the limit also based on different calculations. When the unit value of expo, uh, export exceeds that of imports, the unit value of export imports, uh, uh, I mean uh, imports exceeds that of exports by 85 percent, then the trade could be classified as horizontally uh, differentiated trade. I mean this is based on the AE approach, uh, I think uh, certain other uh, benchmark are given if I mean the exact benchmark if it is 0 0.92 uh, as per this approach uh, uh, within the limit of 0 0.08 then it is called H double IT otherwise it is V double IT. You can have a comparison accordingly with all the approaches I have already discussed. Now last one to be mentioned uh, as part of the you know uh, as part of the understanding for measuring intra interest trade is through uh, corrected versus uncorrected uh, global and Lloyd index. It is the simplest method here the net trade uh, is, is subtracted, uh, but there are certain problems of uh, you know trade imbalances. So, therefore, here instead of uh, taking these there are some changes, they corrected I mean they uh, did uh, take, taken the ratio uh, out of uh, you know adding this component. So therefore, this is uh, this is called corrected one. You just follow it accordingly. We have already discussed these facts. I am not discussing further. You may fo follow it. This is for your uh, understanding only. Just to mention uh, as a last last minute discussion for this uh, particular uh, unit that India's overall IIT uh, 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 is against rest of the world as per the 2000 and 2015 figure uh, regarding you know corrected and uncorrected. As per the corrected uh, index, it is actually higher than that of the un uncorrected one. Now, similarly, average share of India's major trade partners in the trade baskets uh, can be followed. Aust Australia, you know, uh, India's major trade partners, Australia uh, is highest. Uh, USA, China, I mean so far as intra-industry trade is concerned, what are their export share, what is their import share is mentioned we already discussed. So, uh, and an intra-industry trade index is also given here for developing countries context for I mean developed countries context and developing countries context and these are actually based on uh, with certain uh, based on certain negotiations uh, like you know like SICA negotiations, India, EU, uh, EU uh, European Union bilateral uh, you know negotiations we discuss all we will be discussing these details in the WTO uh, chapters. So, uh, so till then you may wait and then accordingly prepare for the exams. So, with this I think stop here. Uh, so, thank you so much.